Alright everyone, welcome back. So, we're essentially in that little stretch to the All-Star break. There's, I think, two more days with games, and then it's pretty much over. But really, most of the teams, I'd say about 95% of them, have played their final games before the All-Star break. The Blackhawks being one of them. So I figured, you know what, it'd be a good time to take a look at some of the teams I don't talk about all too often. And the Chicago Blackhawks are one of them. Uh, the Blackhawks currently are tied for worst in the NHL. Um, yeah, tied. Um, and just honestly, I'm saying things that people have all said. Things are not looking too good for this team. Uh, they aren't a good team. Um, but the future is still something you want to look at. Currently, the Blackhawks are 14-34-2 for 30 points at the All-Star break, uh, which is tied for last in the NHL. Now, if the San Jose Sharks win tonight, uh, the Blackhawks will officially be last. Um, but... As of right now, they are tied for last. So, uh, definitely this team has not really improved much from last year. If you watched last year, last year was a brutal year for this Blackhawks team. Um, this year, it actually might be a little bit worse. But still, um, you can tell that there has not been a lot of improvement just looking at the overall numbers. Which, yeah... That is unfortunate, but we kind of expected that heading into the season. Again, there weren't a whole lot of changes besides adding in Connor Bedard. Um, not a whole lot of young talent in here apart from that. So pretty much this team's just a bunch of, um, you know, guys to help them get through the rebuild. And this is understandable. Um, this is going to take some time. Um, it absolutely is going to take some time. Some numbers here, though, for you. Uh, they have a .300 point percentage, which puts them at last in the NHL, as expected. Uh, they have scored 105 goals and led in 177. Uh, they are 10-11-1 at home, so a pretty solid home record. But they are 4-23-1 on the road. So not a very good road team, which is pretty expected from a team this bad. Uh, they have a 12.4 power play percentage, which is last in the NHL, um, below some teams that, honestly, they weren't even last before Bedard got hurt. Uh, they actually had a pretty solid power play, then Bedard got injured. Uh, and they have a 76.4 penalty kill percentage, which is ranked 26th in the NHL. So, I'm not saying anything here that should surprise you. I'm really not, um, and I, I'm not. Sure, I'm not going to come on here to bash the Blackhawks because I know they're they're in a rebuild. That's that's the current state they're in. They're currently in a rebuild, and that's kind of how it's going. I kind of want to document it though. I want to document how this overall rebuild's been, but just overall in year two, there isn't a whole lot to report on. There isn't. Um, to 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 be fully honest with you, um, there's Connor Bedard, and that's basically it as of right now. Um, so anyways, Bedard, 39 games played, 15 goals, 18 assists for 33 points. Uh, Bedard definitely looks like a really solid NHL player, and then he got injured. Um, and he broke his jaw against the New Jersey Devils about a month ago. It's unfortunate, but things like that happen in the game, so it's not, it's not abnormal, I guess. It happens, um, and unfortunately he's out. He should not waste his time, though. He shouldn't come back when he's not fully healthy. Definitely not. Um, but definitely he want, you want to see him recover and you want to see him back on the ice very soon because at least when Bedard's playing for Chicago, uh, this team has a very, this team actually can be pretty entertaining. There have been a few games that I've watched this year in Chicago, not, not in the city of Chicago because I live in Pennsylvania, but that I've watched for Chicago where Bedard's the star of the show. Uh, Bedard, the way he can, can just control the game as a rookie is very impressive. Now, I didn't see Connor McDavid's rookie season. It wasn't as great as other rookie seasons, obviously, when you look at points. But I never really got to see the sheer dominance of a player like him in his rookie year. But Dart is showing me that. And I really enjoy the way Bedard's playing out there. And he's probably the only player, being brutally honest, that could be enjoyable for this Blackhawks roster. Uh, Jason Dickinson, second in scoring, and I do have a relation to this guy. Um, he is not blood-related to me, but he does have the same last name as me. Uh, 50 games played, 15 goals, 10 assists, 25 points. Uh, Dickinson, been a little bit of a positive player, um, tied for the goal lead in Chicago. Um, he did just get extended a few weeks ago, so I won't, I don't expect him to get traded at this year's deadline, uh, maybe in a few more years, but it looks like he's going to be here to stay to kind of raise his stock value in Chicago, which isn't a bad thing. I've always liked Dickinson on the teams that he's played in before. Uh, Philip Kurashev, another young player here. 
Uh, 43 games played, 8 goals, 16 assists for 24 points. Uh, there have been a lot of players this year who have gotten a chance to play up on the Chicago roster. Um, there's multiple guys that you guys probably don't even know about. Um, and you, what I, if I said their name to you, you'd be like, who the hell is that? Um, who have played up on the Blackhawks this season. Um, some notable players that have really, you know, could look like the future. Kevin Korczynski, future number one defenseman potentially for this team. Alex Vlasic has the upside of being a solid top four defender. Uh, Bedard, obviously. Kurashev, too. He's been in the league for a few more year, for a few years now. Um, and there's other players, too, like Lucas Reichel, um, who has been a little bit concerning. His numbers have kind of concerned me a little bit. Um, but definitely, it's a young player. Um, you want to see him improve. He's definitely going to. I think he has. I think he has it in his skill set for sure. Uh, Nick Foligno, fourth in scoring. I believe he was also signed to a contract. Uh, Forty-three games played, nine goals, nineteen assists, eighteen points. So yeah, Foligno, um, doing the best he can there. Still getting up there in age, but doing what he can do on this Blackhawks roster. And then finally, Seth Jones. Uh, fifth in scoring, I'm not going to go into his contract because I say it in every Blackhawks video. Uh, 35 games played, one goal, 14 assists, 15 points. Yeah, your fifth leading scorer is 15 points. We covered the Lightning yesterday. Their fifth leading guy has about 50 points. So, you know, obviously, again, this team's not good. Like, there, there's no doubt about it, but you want to you wanna see improvement. We're seeing that somewhat within this team you see Bedard in the lineup Bedard's making the team watchable he's making the team more entertaining and I think that you know after this year getting another high draft pick that guy from uh, Michigan Frank Nazer comes over and all the other guys they got preparing up in their roster they can have a pretty solid core very soon especially once Nazer comes over I think that this team will get a lot more entertaining um, Nazer and Bedard, a very young core, that's going to be fun to watch. And especially, too, I know everyone would hate it. If they got Macklin Celebrini, this team would be dangerous very soon. Um, getting a guy like Celebrini and Bedard in back-to-back -back years would make this team way more dangerous sooner rather than later. Obviously, um, I know everyone would hate that. The hockey world would melt down, besides Blackhawks fans, of course. Um, but still, that would be absolutely insane to watch. Uh, goaltending wise, that's one of the few possibilities um, for this, or possibilities, positives for this Blackhawks roster. Uh, Peter Mrazek has looked very good. Uh, 34 games played, 12, 19, and 1. The record doesn't really say it. A 2.92 for a team that has been god awful this year, that's actually pretty solid. And a 0.910. There are teams with goalies who are their starting goalie who Mrazek has better save percentages than. Uh, Andre Vasilevsky, in fact, who yesterday we covered, even though he's played, I believe, less games, has a .899. Mrazek has a .910. Take that into consideration. I know vazzy has been hurt, but still. mrazek has been very good this year and has helped out the Blackhawks a lot. Uh, Arvard Soderblom is your backup goalie with 20 games played, a 2-15-1 record, a 4.07 goals against average, and a .874 save percentage. Uh, his numbers have been brutal, admittedly. Um, that's that's really where it is right there. Only two wins. Um, th this rem It kind of reminds me of Jimmy Howard in that year with the Detroit Red Wings in 2019-20. But yeah, you look at Soderblom, he's the backup goalie, of course. Uh, his numbers aren't going to be all too great, which is really no surprise there. Um, and then obviously, you come to the trade deadline. The deadline definitely is going to get some questions in regards to this team. Who's going to get moved? Who are going to be the number one players that maybe get moved? Well, guys I've seen, maybe Tyler Johnson could get on the trade market. Um, Andres Athens CU as well is a guy that I could see getting moved. Um, there are some names that Chicago could possibly move for some draft capital. I don't expect any massive moves, though. Because, to be fair, what massive moves could you make? Um, if you wanted to trade Mrazek, I guess. But realistically, I'd keep Mrazek right now. I, w I would keep Mrazek in Chicago. Help him, develop help him grow his value, I guess, and then move him in a later year. Um, because I think he's done really well for, for Chicago. I can only imagine what he would do. Um, if he played like this on another roster, um, because he's looked really solid. And in the, especially too, in the years prior to being in Chicago, when he was in Toronto and all those years in Carolina, Detroit, Philadelphia, I can't even believe he played for the Flyers. There were years where he didn't look too good. 
And it feels like he's kind of not really redeemed himself, but made himself look better in Chicago overall. So definitely, I would keep Mrazek. But yeah, obviously, I wouldn't expect any big trade deadline related stuff. Um, I think Chicago is going into the All Star break just thinking that, yeah, we want to get, we just want to keep improving, keep developing our team. Uh, I think Kevin at, or I think um, Richardson's done a very good job. Um, of coaching this team, and Davidson's done a good job of managing this team. I think I have the names correct. Um, sometimes I forget what the GMs, the GMs in that. I believe I remembered them correctly. But anyways, uh, that'll do it for this video. I don't have a whole lot here to talk about. Um, I'm surprised this even is 10 minutes long. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. It does subscribe on down below. I greatly appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, like, in the coming years, we're going to have better videos to talk about with the Blackhawks. Um, we're in that period where they're just in a rebuild. Things aren't looking too good, uh, but things will get better. And that's the part that I like about this channel. I have seen teams develop from being a really bad team to being a really good team. The Red Wings are a prime example of that. The Red Wings have not made the playoffs since I have started my YouTube channel. If they keep going it the way they are, they're going to make the playoffs. And I think that is just, it's so fun to document as I get older and watching these teams grow. But anyways... Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.